Thank you, everybody. All right. Yeehaw. Great. Super NG, thank you all for that. As usual, uh, please like our Facebook page and uh, join our meetup meet group so we can keep you posted. Tonight's hashtags are Startup Grind, Startup, and GBG Tech, as usual. Um, this guy doesn't know that I'm going to do this, but Jonas Delange from Break It is here. Where are you, Jonas? There he is. Um, guys, be sure to pitch him senseless of all the great ideas here in Gothenburg so that he go, goes home to Stockholm and knows what Gothenburg really is. Great. <laughs> all, your, all your great ideas. Uh. Nice. Uh, introducing the team, Alexander Benz, where are you? Alexander Benz is out there. There he is. Hi, man. Uh, Jelena Jankovic, up front. Hey, baby. Uh, uh, <laughs> Christian Refinetti, where are you? In the back, great. Hey! And Club Norman. Hey! So if you guys want any help from us, uh, from our network internationally or whatever, be sure and come talk to us. If you have feedback for the events or if you want to get involved in any way, be sure and come talk to us. Uh, with me on stage is our latest addition to the family, Sven Christia from KPMG, our latest partner in crime. Hello, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, we also have a featured startup of the evening, like we had last time. And this is an opportunity for you guys to show off your own startups during the events. So, for example, you can showcase uh, your products, uh, get some feedback, get some users, maybe, and so forth. Uh, and you send an email to teamgothenburg at startupgrind.com. That is teamgothenburg at startupgrind.com. And just tell us what you do and why you want to be on the event, basically. So, and we'll choose between one and three at every event to showcase. And this time, we have a company uh, which you all probably know a bit about. Uh, they are homegrown rights here in Gothenburg. And with them, you can invest in a super cool solar energy project in Kenya. Have a large impact on people's lives, the environment, and make money at the same time. Welcome up on stage, Trine. Yeah. Over to you, Sven. Here is your pen, buddy. Hi all. Hi there. Hello, Sven. Nice seeing you again. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, we switched seats, which is good. So I'm in the Sam seat for once. <laughs> um, so I'll be moderating today. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you can't get them, just take them. <laughs> so. Um, Tell me something about Trine, Sam. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So Trine is a um, uh, startup from right here. It's actually started brewing the idea in the startup camp, and so we do. As Philip so eloquently said, we combine doing awesome shit, uh, impact, solar, making an impact on people's lives with actually doing good, making money. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's your connection to KPMG? Right, so we are a customer as well. Isn't that funny? Oh, <laughs> really? And <laughs> it all got <laughs> lined up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how come you're a customer of KPMG? Uh, right, so uh, first it started with that we wanted to have, uh, you know, a uh, riktig <laughs> revisor, uh, even though you don't have to have early stage, right? But I thought that uh, if we're going to run a fintech startup, we need to make sure our books are clean from day one and make no mistakes. So I checked around and I got recommended by the network to, to contact one of your guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
Hi, Fabi! <laughs> so, so, so what's that in terms of keep PMG or <laughs> t tough word? <laughs> that is seriously epic, though. I hope we got that on film. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, there's, there, there's no way we can top that. That's so it. I'm over and out. <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but <laughs> and bringing it back. No, but seriously. <laughs> What do you got? What else do you got for me, son? What else do you got for me? <laughs> uh, coming out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so basically, you got in touch with some some good people uh, that recommended you to to us. Yeah. And obviously, it wasn't the name. Right. Because <laughs> that would have uh, scared me a little bit. No, but seriously, uh, f it was all about um, that first recommendation and basically the fact that as we started talking, you guys have a global presence, we want to do global business, so it helped out that you had offices in Kenya, in Uganda, in, in the US, um, um, so it really was an important factor, yeah. I do think we have offices in more countries that I know the name of, to Maybe be honest. Better, yeah, so I can uh, imagine. <laughs> yeah. So basically, again, you, you didn't need to have an auditor when you started, uh, but what kind of questions could you get help with, or what, what was the benefit of having an auditor mm, yeah, going well forward? Yeah, so you know all, all the stuff that's super basic, uh, but if you've never done it before, you have, I had no idea, right? Mom's registering, right? Just VAT registry. Exactly. What the hell? And and how does that impact us as a business? And and uh, and uh, how do we organize ourselves in the right way uh, um, so that we are you know correct but also optimal, right? Um, so I got a lot of help with that, uh, and I you know a lot of good flexibility from the team to not you know kill me with with costs when I don't have uh, too much but to be very open and frank so I could budget it, right? So we knew what costs would come and help us with that. So. Yeah. Uh, that's all obviously a good thing that, that the invoicing uh, sort of measures up to the fact that you're a startup and you need a lot of help, but you, well, you need to get it from somewhere. Yeah, we were super cash flow constrained. And the most important thing, like nothing is for free, right? But at least it was very, we, we had this conversation and Andreas first, then Henrik, was t we, we had this, before it's the, r uh, the tab starts running out of my control, you have to call me. You have to give me a heads up. I have to know, right? Uh, I don't want to have a surprise invoice later uh, and not be able to handle it. And so very open, transparent communication. Yeah. Fair enough. So... Um the global presence and uh, the fact that we uh, we didn't invoice the shit out of you was good factors. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> and then that the the recommendation I would have talked with you guys, right? The the actual introduction from somebody inside of the start. Well, you're here, right? You're in the scene right now, and I think that's really important to be contributing to the startup scene. Yeah, it's always nice being here. I hear there's a free beer later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Great stuff. Um, so, again, uh, what? So you got some help from from our offices in Africa. Yeah, we've been t uh, uh, we've been in touch with them. Uh, turned out that KPMG also has this global, you know, help startups program uh, for companies that do good stuff in in Africa. And so, um, uh, you know, you guys are helping me get in touch with the right people in that magnificently large organization of yours. Turned out they're sitting in Austria and in Finland. And, uh, Not so much in Africa. No, <laughs> but they are the ones managing the program that you guys have in Africa. And, you know, good introductions, I, I guess. I hope something good would come out of it. And we've met your offices in Kenya uh, uh, and, you know, um, have at least somebody to call when we need some troubleshooting because it is Kenya, in fact, right? Yeah. Really good. Great. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. It was good sitting in, uh, in this seat. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? KPMG loves startups, even though you can't tell from the name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. man. <laughs> very, very nice. So, Sam, you're the featured uh, startup uh, of the evening. Yes. Yeah? Excited? You bet your bottom I am. 
Uh, so you do have the impact competition um, uh, program or a competition where the winner gets uh, to save the world, um, make some money, and for tonight wins an exclusive solar lamp and a free ticket for the next event. Yes. Is that so? That is so. Should I tell you more about it? I'm interested in the solar <laughs> lamp. <laughs> yeah, you should, com you should <laughs> compete. All right, so we have the impact uh, contest. We're trying this out for the first time. Uh, it's, uh, it's a user test, if anything, right? And we want to incentivize everybody to try our service. So help us out. It's going to be really, really good. So if you look in the back right there, you're going to see how it starts working. Oh, my goodness, stuff is happening. So basically, this is how you compete and how you join and how you win this solar lamp and a ticket for the next grind. And now remember, two tickets for the next grind. Nice. All right. He just upped it up. Whoa, Philip. All right. So yeah, three tickets. Free two tickets, steps to keep tickets. in mind. It's all there. We have some papers. So you're going to be able to join. But two steps, right? One, you use your smartphone. You go to start, there you go, right? You go to jointrine.com slash startup grind. That's the URL, it's gonna be all over the place. Jointrine.com slash startup grind. There you click the join button. Step one, that's how you start. How do you win? Is by investing minimum 25 euros and inviting other people. That aggregates your impact score. And that is a live leaderboard right there. So the more you do, the more you invest, the more people you get to invest from wherever, over Facebook or whatnot, tonight will give you more score and therefore you get a higher rank. And the one at the end of the evening that is on top wins the lamp and wins the two tickets. In this project that we got up there, it's 5% return per year for five years that you expect. If the project goes well, 5% return per year for five years. Impact is total project is 1,200 people that will connect to the electricity project and f completely change their daily setting, right? So kerosene lamps correspond to smoking two packets of cigarettes per day for the children in those environments. So this project alone is 1,200 people with all their kids that is not going to be in that situation. And a bejesus amount of carbon dioxide offset because it's kerosene that we're taking away from the earth, right? So it's bananas. And there is a really good uh, uh, solar lamp and two startup grant tickets, by the way. Yeah. You mean after the five years? Well, it's a nano grid, right? So actually there is a local solar energy entrepreneur that is making money on selling the power. And so he just maintains his business. By then you and I as investors, we're out, but they have electricity in the village. Yeah. All right, should we flip? Yeah. All right, big it up for Kupi MG as an interviewer, peeps. All right, <laughs> thank you. Let me come. Uh, uh, oh my goodness, now I get to go back into my uh, normal role for the evening. That was, uh, that was all funny. Uh, for all of you, who, who's never been at a grind before? Yeah, okay. So this is where I normally sit. Uh, this featured startup thing is, is, you know, special for this evening. Normally I get to sit here and I get to interview this, this awesome rock star um, of the evening. So, so let's get tuned in. Uh, For all you new ones, listen up. This is important. We do something that we call a rock star greeting. We're going to sit here, have a very nice conversation for an hour or two, so we got to get the energy level through the ceiling. So this time, we want to make sure to do a little bit of a pa practice round. Okay? So a rock star greeting is when you clap your hands and you shake your legs and you stomp your feet and you make so much noise, there's going to be cracks at this old, nice, beautiful building, right? I'm going to blow the ceiling off. And in order to make sure, because our guest tonight is special, Lena Hoppler, I mean, we're going to talk about that, then an Akshay Kushan right there, holy shit, right? 
so, so amazingly talented person. So we want to make sure that that greeting is just bananas. Okay. So it's a practice round. Everybody ready? Okay. So you start from the leg, and I'm gonna say yada yada, and let's give a big warm welcome round. Let's go, start of grand welcome. Hey! Hey! Yeah. Okay, we have two ways of measuring the success of this. It's an iterative type, type of the development thing. One, there's no cracks in the uh, ceiling. S awesome, slight improvement required. Uh, two, no, s like anybody have sore hands? No, okay. After next time, it better be sore, like pain. Okay, all right. Let me tell you a little bit about Lena. Yeah. Um, you know, May every year is Global Female Founders Month at Startup Grind. So all around the world, in more than 80 cities, we are trying to get a female founder on the seat. And man, did we get it right this month in Gothenburg. You know, when we all are talking about fintech, Lena founded a bank. Um, she founded Collector in 1999. Uh, to the joy of some people who invested in her IPO, uh, you know, in June 10th, I believe, uh, I believe in 2015. That's how it's gone since she IPO'd. She, um, you know, Collector has a balance sheet of 12 billion kroners and a market cap of about 13, 14 billion. As I said, Lena is a massively impressive person. She openly hates bullshitters, uh, check, break it, it's right there. Uh, she's still looking forward, after all of this, to her biggest achievement that is coming up in life. And when she dies, she wants it to happen quietly, in her sleep, age 110 years, after a kick-ass night out clubbing. She is the two-time winner of the Most Powerful Female Entrepreneur of the Year Award. So clearly a badass. Let's give it up. I want to hear a massive Startup Grind greeting for Lena Opler. And <laughs> <laughs> give it up. Give it up. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Yeah. Warmly welcome. Thank you, sir. Definitely some sore hands out there. I can see them. Yeah. <laughs> so, how that feel? Very good indeed. I should have been a rock star before. <laughs> 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 well, you know what? Where we are, you are. <sighs> All right. As we talked before, Lena, so what's going to happen is, is we're going to have a conversation. Um, fireside chat, and then we're going to uh, spend uh, a solid amount of time on a crowdsourced interview kind of thing. Everybody, most of you knows what that is, so pull those smartphones up, please. Don't make me come after you, <laughs> right? Uh, could we flip to Slido there, Philip, please? Oh, yeah, we're going to bring that one back. That slide is like candy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. You just go sleep watching that slide. We have some technical issues. Yeah, in my pocket. Try. Okay, better like that, yeah? Yeah, yeah and then let's angle it. Yeah. it Can you hear me? Yes. Very yeah, good. Good. Yeah, it's, it's all the clapping that, that just it broke. Most it. probably yeah. exactly. broke the technique. You know what you told me? Yeah. That imagine that we sit in your living room yes. in a sofa having yeah. a conversation. Yes. Do you normally do it like this with Actually audience yeah. and uh, cameras it and... Uh, in my secret dreams, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but reality, no, never happened. Yeah. But we'll get there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But let's decide. Me and you, once in the future, yeah. this event, right? There. You never know. <laughs> All right. Very cool. All right. So regarding that, everybody, get into Slido.com and use the hashtag Lena to join the event. Slido.com and hashtag Lena to join the event. When you're in there, you're going to be able to pose your questions. Everybody else is going to see the question dynamically right there on your phone. And then you like the questions by pressing the thumb up, the ones that you want to vote to the top. 
And then when we're coming to that part, we have this crowdsource phenomenon. Whatever questions that are on top, we start off with and we work our way down as much as we can. Okay. Right? Yeah. So we get Fine. most of the cool stuff happening over there. Yeah. Very cool. But so, to get us started, mm -hmm. is it okay with the temperature and everything? Oh, yes, it's fine. Comfy? All right. So, to get started, th just the five-minute version, right, of Lena just being born, Bia, Bia, all the way up to find a uh, founding collector in 1999. This is zip, five minutes. In five minutes? Get it done. At my age? Yes. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born and raised in a small village outside Boros. Yep. Up La Red. Yeah. Ba bam. And <laughs> yeah, we have some people from Bros here. Good. Um, single child, loved and spoiled, with um, mother and father who gave me lots of attention and self confidence, I would say. Um, good girl, nice girl in school, but also always disruptive mm -hmm. in the same time. Well, I left uh, Opla Red and Boros when uh, after th after school I started, uh, I came to Gothenburg. I planned to be a journalist, but I was uh, very immature, very childish. So in the 70s, I really felt that I didn't belong at the crowd there. Right. They were very political and very much Jan Josefsson. Yeah. So I felt a bit <laughs> awkward and uh, decided to do something else. So I started to take some courses in university mm -hmm. in maths, uh, math and... Um, statistics and uh, economy and uh, all of a sudden I got a summer job at SCB, right. the bank, the big bank, which I um, enjoyed very much and I was offered a trainee uh, place there which I also accepted and actually the first 12 years of my career I spent with SCB. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, still a good girl but a bit disruptive. Uh, then I joined a Norwegian bank and a French bank. And then in the former finance crisis, where most of you weren't even born, it was in the early 90s, I joined a state-owned company called Securum. And uh, it was created to s basically solve uh, the problems of Nordea to avoid bankruptcy for that big bank. And uh, as late as that, I think my entrepreneurial skills started to develop. Right. That is, I realized that I'm at my best when I can make my own decisions and uh, get the power to do them. Mm. So after Securum, I um, was very clear about not going back to one of the banks. So I created my own company. I found a collector. And Collector started as a workout company, actually like a small Securum. Mm -hmm. um, but my business plan has been changed so many times. I'm uh, very opportunistic. Right. And uh, we became a modern finance company and finally a bank with full uh, license. And then we uh, noted the bank, as you said, last year in yep. June. Well, that was a great moment. That was a great mm -hmm. moment, yeah. It was. So, so just taking your you know, baby all the way to, uh, to IPO. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what, I've, what I've understood is that, let me just, that final step is, is a pretty, you know, intense step to go public. Yeah, it is. Of course it is. But still, we have been under the supervision of the uh, finance inspection yeah. since 2001. And uh, that is uh, as tough as you making an IPO. Mm -hmm. So most of the job was actually done. That's the thought, right? So, I th so is you think because you were in that space of finance, yeah. it was actually a uh, more easy transition? It was. Yeah. And also because we uh, had, um, I was not the sole owner at the IPO, unfortunately. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's also a good exercise to bring some uh, external owners into the company because that also right. makes you uh, behave as a, as a public company mm -hmm. with um, <coughs> reporting and following your business plans and, uh, yeah. well, having some discipline right not yeah. only not only growth and entrepreneurship but also order and discipline right mm -hmm. very nice well I so um regarding the the owner thing i, I remember when we had our, our f you know first chat you you mentioned that you have to ch be very careful and, and choose your owners wisely right pick the good ones 
Definitely. Yeah. So how did you how do you handle that? Where do you start with that? Uh, well, uh, we made a fairly simple process because when we decided to become a fully licensed finance company in right. 2006, <laughs> maybe, uh, we needed an uh, equity of 5 million euros. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that much money. So right. the choice was easy. Either keep the majority in a small company or finding investors. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's so much more exciting to grow a company and let the company become big than having the majority. But uh, we didn't make any, uh, sp we didn't make much fuss about it. Mm -hmm. We had had two family offices here in Gothenburg knocking at our door for a couple of years. And they said, if you want to bring on external owners, we would like to be there. Mm. So we uh, approached them mm, and so uh, we didn't use any corporate uh, firms or... Yeah. It w was that a was that a uh, like long dwelling type of decision for you a hard decision no. to bring them in and choose you know the the smaller share of a bigger cake path Basically or was a it weekend. given yeah. a weekend you thought about it a weekend and then you said rather have a massively more important yeah sh you know and also of course uh, I knew the investors right. I knew they were decent people and. Mm. I mean, they had approached me for a couple of years and wanted to invest. Right. And uh, I s felt that if they have discovered our company as early as that, mm. and they followed us, uh, we discussed a lot of uh, our plans and uh, shared values. Right. And um, they had confidence in me, and I had confidence in them. And it turned out ver to be very good. Fruitful relationship? Yes. Mm. And and so b if we skip a little bit further back and do a couple of key touchdowns in the you know five minute super tight version that you just did, uh, I mean Gothenburg in end of the nineties, assumingly not a great you know banker market. Oh oh no, very gloomy. Yeah, uh, kind of lonely. Yeah, I can bet when I um, uh, worked for Securum, I was based in Stockholm, mm -hmm. but I had my husband here and. Uh, I was tired of commuting on a weekly basis, so I decided to get back. But that was really, really um, sort of a sad sight to c come to Gothenburg at that time because if everybody was so depressed. Yeah. How long had you and your husband been together at that time? Oh, for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen years? No, more. We got married in 84. A family? The two of you? The two of us. Mm -hmm. 84. 84. 84, my goodness, yeah. I'm not good at years, I have to think. You yeah. I'm right about <laughs> that. Eighty four. That's <laughs> awesome. And and but so you rolled that long distance relationship thing for a, so a long time too, when he was here, I mean? Yeah. He well, yeah, we did that for three and a half years. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was commuting on Monday to Thursday. Yeah, Vecco Pendling. Vecco Pendling. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Good old way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's for uh, you global startup grind people, we will explain it to you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something you you can do for for a few years, but yeah. not forever. Not long term. No. So that was a part of it, and then, um, and then we skip forward a little bit. In two thousand six or so, you started growing. Yeah. Uh, what was that? What drove that growth? That intense period of the growth. The simple fact that we became a fully licensed finance company. Mm -hmm. We decided to skip the workout part because that was really tiring. I've mm -hmm. been solving problems for f five years in Securum and then another five years with Collector, and I was mm -hmm. really tired of problems. So really, that, that part that you did before that was to take bad credit yeah. and make it uh, acceptable for yes, others. Yes, or uh, realize collaterals or right. uh, whatever could be done. So that's Some restructuring our companies as well. So within the, within the finance world, that is a business model, and then yeah. you pivoted quite severely somehow. Yeah. Uh, into another area. Yeah. And, and what was that about? Why did you pivot? Because I became so tired of solving other people's problems. So <laughs> it was sort of yeah. taking all the energy from me and I got so little. So it was the entrepreneurial decision that yeah. you have. It's not the business plan, whatever, this no, and that. We change it. Yeah, but you and, and y I'm sure you had some people that you had to convince of this, yeah. you know, flip of at yep. least 90 degrees. Yeah. yeah. And, and Almost how did that go? Almost 180, I would say. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it was also 
a fact known from our um, starting point where we, we helped out with restructuring ca companies and we've realized that uh, companies, although in a problem right now, they didn't have much of a solution to get from other banks. Mm. So we realized that there is something we could do. We started with factoring because mm. some of the companies had really good end customers. And uh, we right. tried to convince the banks that please don't look at this company. Look they at their powerful customers. Yes, mm. look at their powerful customers because you're going to accept that risk. Mm -hmm. But the banks didn't realize that. So nice. that's why we started to do it So ourselves. because you were in it, you saw the opportunity. Yeah, right. Was it tough? to convince your co-founder and other peers that actually we're just going to... Because it was a sustainable business and changing that is no, tough. No, because yeah. that was exactly when we took them on. Because we mm. really that was the point where we needed more equity. Right. Before that we didn't need it. So right. they were convinced from the start. And your co-founder? Yeah, he was convinced as well. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, very nice. All right, so, um, you know, on current events, on the uh, 100 million corner fund uh, that you're rolling uh, you mean together collector with collector ventures collector ventures yeah. that you're rolling um, what are you looking for in your investments well we are looking basically for fintech innovations mm -hmm. because we are a digital niche bank uh, the entire private sector is run digital mm -hmm. and we uh, realize that there are some good people outside collector who may have bright ideas. And uh, to find them, we would like to invest in them and see what we can do together. So it's basically to help us develop Collector even further. Right. And, and taking that to our uh, utmost selfish view of you know, focusing on the uh, Gothenburg yeah. startup scene. Uh, what's your take on the Gothenburg startup scene? Well, uh, of course, if you compare with Stockholm, which you have to do, yep. uh, Gothenburg has been so much m more in the shadow. Uh, there are maybe not as many startups here as in Stockholm because you have a bigger city, but there are quite a number of them. Yep. And I think events like you have right now with the Gothenburg Tech Week is so good because it brings out all the people. You get to know them, you get to see them. Uh, because otherwise you find the market is not uh, so easy to uh, find here because mm -hmm. you have some th companies coming from Shalmas Ventures, you have some other, there are different entities, but uh, to find the entire scope is, is a bit hard. Right, it yeah. feels a little bit verticalized, right? It is. Yeah, and so, yeah, we need to break that apart. Do you have any any thoughts on how we would do that? Well, I think uh, events like Gothenburg Tech Week yeah. is very good. Yeah. Then I think we, uh, the closer cooperation and maybe uh, closer location would be even better. Because it seems like sometimes people tend to protect their own little mm. entity and area. So more collaboration between the different verticals of yeah. startups. Yeah. yeah. Agreed with that. There is, I mean, there is uh, what they call GLab 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is one good example. Exactly. Yeah, and there are Connect Vest where mm. I'm on the board. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think you should sort of try to put all the uh, companies together a bit closer. Yeah, and uh, also physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm. and maybe facilitate even location. Yeah, cool. All right, let's segue back to back to Lena. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, decision making. Okay. What about it? Um, so we were talking about this decision, right? That you made them. Do you did a pivot, and then you told me that uh, that you had a uh, you had a boss mentor kind of relationship who was talking about uh, like a hierarchy of decisions. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about here? Not really. Okay. <laughs> so then you said, yeah. So I, because I loved it, and I thought this is definitely something we need oh to yeah, get out there. Oh yeah, you remember my my first boss at Secura? Yeah, Nationale. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's this? Lars Tunnel. It was Lars Tunnel. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well Later, uh, IFC guy and, and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. you mean the uh, when we had the first kickoff at Securum, nobody knew what we were supposed to do. Right. We realized, first I said that this is going to be a sort of uh, 
special entity for special credits. And yeah, they were special because they weren't performing all of right. them Bad in credits. default. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, when we joined the first kickoff, Lars Tuner is still there, and dis he described that we got 20 billion kroner from the Swedish state to take over these credits, and our mission was to transform the credits to by, by realizing the collaterals, selling out the assets, and get cash uh, in the uh, as fast as possible, but with um, keeping value in mind. And he said to us, the best thing is if you all take the right decision. The second best, if you make the wrong decision. But the worst is if you don't make any decisions at all, because then you don't have to, then you don't fit in. Right. That drove a certain attitude, did it? I did, because most of uh, the people at Secure uh, at the start were actually recruited from Nordea. Mm. And you know, bankers are not known for taking quick decisions. So some of them were seemed a bit worried. Uh, yeah. There was a um, re-employment uh, arrangement with Nordea, and about, I would say, the 50% used it. Really? Yeah. That's super interesting. I think interesting. that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We weeded out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, on like immediately after that meeting, or well like a few months later, they not just during the meeting, but <laughs> the during the spring. <laughs> they started the spring. to just yeah. trickle down towards you know, secure blanket. Yeah. Yeah, very fascinating. Right, so how do you then now, you know, X years later, keep in shape mentally for active and good and powerful decision making? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Well, I'll make decisions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, developing a company is a very good exercise for your brain. Yeah. Uh, it's not a problem. I'm, uh, I mean, I, I live, love, eat, sleep, Collector, yeah, I love it. So, yeah. what's the problem? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds like a good way of of segueing into uh, you know uh, the coffee break. Just want to take a look behind you, Lena. Uh, we got some questions coming up. Perfect. Keep feeding those. And uh, Philip, what do you say in terms of time? Should we? Thirty minutes break. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll take a quick thirty-minute break. Coffee. Is that quick? 30 minutes <laughs> break? <laughs> a very long break. In this crowd, talkative people, yeah, not normal Swedish. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's really, really short, actually. Right? And we need to make sure they have time to go into the competition, too, right? So okay. Yeah. All right. So 30 <laughs> minutes sharp. You want uh, money to your <laughs> company, <laughs> and I realize it. Uh, no, no, no. Crowdfunding. Uh, uh, we have 30 minutes from now. That means 10 past people. So let's make it 10 past sharp, please, and go. All right. Thank you. You got to get the energy. And then the other one is when you're doing the tough questions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they're tough out of many reasons. Yeah? But for you, it's because of personal reasons. Uh, okay. So you had a, um, uh, your husband for many years passed away. Yeah. In the middle of all of this yeah, super action yeah. that we saw. Yeah? And you had been together for many years. Yeah. So Married since uh, 84 and uh, together uh, many more years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so is it okay to talk a little bit about that? Like, like you as a founder entrepreneur uh, and, and how, you, you know, how you process that when he passed away? Yeah. Well, I'm not. Yes, of course it is. Yeah. Uh, he Thomas died in 2011 in, mm -hmm. in December from cancer. Yeah. And I don't know if I've processed it differently if I had another professional role. But maybe for me it was sort of a uh, life rescue to have collector as a, a very demanding and interesting professional world. Because when your private life collapses, it's even more important to have a pr professional life which is... Um, well, not only challenging, but uh, taking loss of energy and taking loss of time, because that gives you some sort of uh, pause. You can't mourn all the time. You have to focus yeah. on something else, and that was very good for me. And so you have this, uh, I'm sure, a bunch of practicalities that need to be sorted through. Uh, at the same time as, so when was this, you said, in 2000? In December 2011, right? December at 2000, Christmas. Exactly. Yeah. 
And so you have to do that at the same time as you have this growing team and uh, you know yeah. this, this business. So how do you, do you remember, like reflect upon what, uh, what made you not, not do what I think a lot of people would do, which is, you know, just screw it, stay home, like, you know? Well, I s Throw your hands this up, happened yeah. right before Christmas. So I stayed home over Christmas and New Year. Mm -hmm. and then I realized that, like you say, we are practical things to, uh, to cope with. And uh, I think I needed something else to focus on. Right. Because it's, of course, it's easy that you st well, stay, in stay back home and feel sorry for yourself. And I didn't want to do that. So I went back to a to, uh, job after right after New Year. And that was good for me. Mm. I mean, I it's very hard to, uh, there is no standard solution how you cope with uh, morning. morning or or hard things like losing a person. I think that's very individual, but for me it worked. I mean, that gave me some space and some time to breathe. And And how about the world around you? Do you remember your colleagues were they you know they were very sympathetic because i've been very open about uh, thomas illness mm. since he had cancer but he was not expected to die so quick right uh, so that was a sort of shock but since i've been uh, been very open all the time i really met a lot of understanding and sympathy from everybody right and so yeah. uh, I mean that is one of the good things with being open. The uh, you don't have to. Uh, uh, well, f people accepted that I was not in the best of shape. Maybe I wasn't so happy. Uh, maybe I was irritated, and right. I got lots of understanding and sympathy for that. So very open, very and open. transparent about it. Yeah, you know. that's how yeah. I am with most of the things. Right. That's my way of... That's my personality, I think. How has it always been like this with you? This Being very open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, it's become more obvious over the years. Okay. I, I started by playing roles, of course. Right. When I worked with SCB, I wanted to be as the other big shots. <laughs> right. You know, mm -hmm. wearing uh, suits and looking like... <laughs> looking the role. Yeah. Looking the yeah. part, yeah, and and can you now looking back see when some change happened? Was it gradual? Was it like? It was gradual, uh, yeah. really. Uh, maybe uh, the big change came during the secu securum period, I think. Because you got to do the your own decisions. Yeah. Right. So empowerment. Somehow, yeah. Mm. Very interesting. And so, um, another one of those fascinatingly, uh, slightly tough questions to talk about is, so last year, we had this Female Entrepreneur of the Month event. And, uh, and, and you know, it's, it was really hard to find uh, female entrepreneurs for the event. So I talked a lot about that. And, and uh, we got, uh, I in the break, in the coffee break, mm -hmm. you got some sharp feedback that, you know, just, Sam, stop talking about this female thing. Yeah? Um, but I only got that from female entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, and I guess I'm wondering if you have an idea of, of what that's about in terms of, you know, does it help to talk and inspire uh, about female entrepreneurship and do a thing out of it? Or is it just messing it up by talking about equality because then you make it an issue and... Because, I, of course, I see both sides of the yeah. coin. But what's your take? What do you think? The coin has two sides. I mean, it works both ways. Uh, I understand in a way that... I mean, there is a reason why I have become the most powerful female entrepreneur for two years. The competition is not so sharp, right. but it will be. So <laughs> understand that your, the younger female entrepreneurs here don't really like to hear, uh, hear us talking all the time that it's tough to be a female entrepreneur. Yeah. I don't think it's so tough, <laughs> honestly. Um, 
I don't give a damn that I'm female. I am female, so what's the thing about that? And I have the uh, attitude that if I can do it, so many other can do it. It's nothing magic about it. Uh, but maybe there have been there has not been such a long tradition of female entrepreneurs, not in Sweden and not nor anywhere else. Uh, so the role models have been fewer. Right. But I think you see them coming on on, on a broader scale now. I right. see lots of them. Exactly. Here in the room and mm -hmm. elsewhere. And I can't. Uh, I can't realize there isn't a difference by being a um, female or male entrepreneur. The same shit, the same hard work, the same <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. hardship. Exactly, right. Yeah. I mean, maybe there is a slight risk that if you get kids early and uh, still the mother is carrying the baby and maybe taking uh, more responsibility. It is tough to be entrepreneur and having two small kids, I should mm. guess. I haven't, but I've seen some in my among my friends, and it's a tough combination. Yeah. So maybe some of the um, female entrepreneurs take a pause during a few years. I mean, right. I was very mature when I started my company, so you don't have to be 25 or even no, 30. No, exactly. Do it whenever. Yeah. Yeah. So I question this thing. Maybe that. Maybe in fact we have come as this far in Sweden. So in our minds, it's not a thing. It's not a conversation. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I know outside of Sweden, I mean, by personal experience, yeah. in some places, I know it's still a damn big issue Yeah. Uh, in some countries. Have you seen the difference? Yes, I've seen the uh, professional difference overall. For example, in Germany, mm -hmm. where I have a few friends, uh, they're highly educated, but you still have uh, some beskattning. What, mm -hmm. um, what do you call it in English? Yeah, you're taxed as you're a You're taxed as family, a couple. Yeah. So, of course, Germany has the best educated housewives in the world, I would say. Mm. And Switzerland, the same. That doesn't really encourage entrepreneurship exactly. either. Exactly, yeah. So there are some uh, uh, old-fashioned societies uh, here and there. Right. So next year, hopefully, of course, <laughs> we're going to do the same. Of course. Yeah, and we're going to have this, with this, this specific focus. You know, should we talk about it, or should we say, "Ah, screw it! It's Entrepreneur of the Month, no matter what, every month." Well, I don't think it's uh, a bad idea to talk about it because still the female entrepreneurs are underrepresented, if you right. measure. So until we are sort of fifty-fifty, you could still talk about it. Yeah, All but right, don't cool. make an issue or a problem of it. Yeah, just see that things happen. Yeah, encourage female entrepreneurs. Very cool. Right, just keep that in mind. It will be recorded, so I won't forget. No, w we'll remind you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, very, very cool. Um, okay, I think we should, uh, um, you know, make sure to spend a lot of time, get a lot of good questions right there. So of let's course. turn our attention to the crowd. And uh, that looks so weird on the screen right there, <laughs> Philip. Or no, it's oh, it's just a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna try to moderate here online myself, which is always a, a nightmare. Uh, and we're ready with the mic peeps? Okay. So the first question, and this is how we roll it, mm -hmm. is, uh, is by, you know, anonymous. And clearly this is a badass question because it got the most votes. So does anonymous want to claim the question? The mic will come and you can pose your question yourself to Lena. So anonymous, are you in the room? <laughs> There's going to be a lot of anonymous. Do we close our way. eyes or what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else want to claim? Ah, Klobbe, can you claim the fr question? Uh, Excellent. Claim the yeah. You don't know me. No, I don't see you. <laughs> <laughs> so, hello. Yes. So, Lena, what are your thoughts on Sweden having the highest private debt in the world? Well, um, I don't think it is such a major problem that some people will claim. 
Uh, in Sweden, we buy our um, uh, apartments and our private residential living to a much higher extent than we do abroad. And that, of course, um, makes us have quite heavy debt compared to income. But as long as uh, it's your residential living, which um, is the major part of the debt, I don't think it's a big problem. Uh, what, what is a problem, though, is, of course, negative interest rates and uh, very low interest rates on your house loans have had a tremendous impact on prices. And um, the levels now are uh, too high, if you ask me. And, uh, of course, the interest rates will not remain on this low level. So it may become a bit uh, of a problem in uh, five, six, seven years. Mm. Is it okay to can I ask a full floor for that? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. how how will you at Collector then help me in five, six, seven years? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We can always change the rules. No, full frågor is not okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry to say, but we are not a private aid organization. <laughs> uh, so she did that shit when she was young. Then she yeah. founded a bank. <laughs> you know, I transformed to a bank now. So, but I think that. Um, you will not see such a tremendous rise in interest rates either. I think you will be able to keep your apartment even in six, seven years. But please remember that when I bought my first villa with Thomas, the interest rates were about seven, eight percent, and that was low, considered low at that time. Mm -hmm. So we will see a more, um, maybe an interest level of three, four percent in some years. Yeah. Don't expect it to be 1.5. Don't buy two expensive apartment. High five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Yeah. Uh, next question. We should give you a mic, my friend. Where is the mic at? Jonas is right here up <coughs> front. Before Siri right up here from Aram ask us to that she's not understanding the question. <laughs> so what not? Yeah. Sorry for the Swedish here. But I was the first uh, to have a question here. So yeah. Uh, what is the future challenges within fintech? The biggest challenges, do you think? If I may, I would like to rephrase the question. I don't think the, high, the, the biggest challenge is for the fintech business. I think it's for the banks to find out what sort of fintech solutions should they go for. I mean, fintech as, as a broad line of business will have all the opportunities and the... Uh, especially the major big banks, will have problems in choosing which way are we going, which road are we choosing. Um, your fintech guys, well, you continue to develop. We know that there are s lots of ideas which will be um, developed outside the big banks and also companies to be uh, accomplished and uh, successful outside the big banks. So I don't think you guys have the problem. I think the big banks have. Yeah, awesome. Very nice. Tough love for the big banks. Let's see here. We archive that one. And uh, we have the next question. ML, my friend, do you want to claim it? ML, hello. Of course, <laughs> Maria. <laughs> uh, hi. So hi. Um, what do you look for in companies you invest in? Well, uh, first of all, of course, I would prefer a business idea which I think the market would request and ask for. Uh, something will which has a realistic future. Uh, then, and maybe the most important, I look for a good team. Because I know that the uh, business plan will be changed, or can be changed. I changed mine so many times. But uh, bad management can hardly change to a good team. So the team is maybe the most important. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, going back to Mr. Collis in the corner. This is uh, one of those fun games. 
<laughs> ping pong, what not. <laughs> Maria, coming back to you very soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, this is not a joke. You're all laughing, but this is, <laughs> this is actually what's happening. Come on, <laughs> you need to post some <laughs> questions. Okay, so what's the next company you're going to start? You know what? I'm not sure gonna I'm going to start another company because I'm so in love with Collector. I'm not a serial entrepreneur, really. I'm, uh, I stick to my collector. And then I invest mm. in other companies which you guys started. Nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> very, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Philip is <laughs> I just you, you, <laughs> you get to do it it's yourself. Between yeah. the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fun. Okay, right, this, this is go. an easy question, or maybe not. But um, startup and family life, how? With a lot of question marks. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it's not always an easy combination. You have to have a very um, understanding partner, understanding family. Because you know, that when you start a company, you bring it with you 24-7. But as a start-up company, you also have to realize that you have a family and give them some time. Don't forget the family for your company because you need both. Mm. Very nice. Thank you. All right. Oops. Was there one more coming up there? Didn't yeah, but that's... Oh, there's one in between. Here we go. All right. I know who this is. Hannah, are you in the room? Here you are. <laughs> Hannah Atrain. Here we go. Pass it. Yes, we are a collaborative type of, you know, crowd going all the way to the back, peeps. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, that really worked out well, Philip. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, great, great. So, <laughs> yeah. so that was some <laughs> Took like five minutes, but yeah. it's okay. You just hang out there. <laughs> Have a good text message to send. Yeah. <laughs> Have a cocktail. Sam, shut up. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, go. <laughs> okay, so which is the most interesting startup in Sweden right now, according to you? Well, it's an impossible question to answer. I don't know. Oh, I haven't seen more than a few of them. Pick but I'll tell you something. One? Tomorrow we have the first investment committee in uh, Collective Ventures. Uh, we have 12 business cases coming up after one month. <laughs> and this is only the start. So. Impossible question. I think there are so many interesting startups right now. Uh, maybe I'm a, uh, I've not been into this market so long, so I'm more observant now, but I've never seen so many interesting startups coming up in so short time as the last six, 12 months. Mm. The future is yours. Very, very nice. I, I'll just ask in the past and then maybe get like some top of mind startup. <laughs> I should keep sight of <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Swinging it back forward to Maria. <laughs> you get good votes tonight, Maria. Top ranked questions. I swear all it's around. the last one. It's the last one, I swear. Okay. It's good. <laughs> people, people, you ask people vote. This is awesome. Keep, keep them flowing. So, just your biggest tip for female founders don't be shy. Hmm. Be. Uh, well, stand up and take some place and go for it. Don't let them uh, step on you. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Clear for you all? <laughs> Very nice. Um, we, we, we have an organization that is posting a question. Oh, <laughs> an organization <laughs> in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Venture Cup. <laughs> this is a question from everybody that works at Venture Cup. There you go. <laughs> uh, so basically, you already answered this question about women in uh, in startups and being, you know, being a uh, a female who, and you just said that you're not defined by your gender. But I just feel sometimes it's very difficult to, you know, de penetrate the market since it's just old dudes or old men sitting with the tweed jackets and they're not letting me in. You just don't find that difficult, or. No, mm. I avoid the old Jews with tweed jackets. It's oh, not you worth with them? Uh, yeah. wasting time on them. But there are lots of other, both gen genders, who uh, don't really give a damn if you're male or female. Mm. 
uh, basically I've heard the opposite. Why are there so few female in fintech? So I think there's a demand for that. So do you think that perhaps female, um, perhaps we are the biggest threat to ourselves or, you know, female on female and they don't let you in or so on? W Could it be? I think that is a myth. That you think? That females don't, don't yeah. invite females. Yeah. At least I've not experienced that. No, no. honestly, no. <laughs> there has not been so many times in my life where, well, I've, I've had a female boss twice in my life when I was employed, and that's been very good. Do you think you're the lucky ones or the lucky one? Because I've encountered the ap actually the opposite of that. But. If you find yourself meeting uh, mm. with a um, female, either boss or investor, who has that attitude, run <laughs> in the other direction and find a new one. But that could be female or male. I mean, right. I don't think it's only gender. Hmm. Bad boss, get out. Yeah, immediately. Don't waste time on bad bosses. Very cool. They won't get better. Nice. Thank you. Very nice. All right, we got one from Anonymous. Anybody, you want to claim it or or should I? Wait, just got some voting going on. We are live. And uh, Eva's question just <coughs> ranked higher than Anonymous <laughs> as I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Eva, good job. <laughs> How did you get that vote in the last second? Because I might, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about the uh, mentoring. Uh, do you have a mentor or have, or have you having been having a mentor during your career? No, not any particular mentor. I think I've used uh, people in my professional life and asked for advice from time to time, but I've not been pointing out to anybody particular as being a mentor. Um, when I was in the early stage of my career, it was not so common. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I've uh, had, I was lucky at that time, I had, I had good bosses, so I probably used them. Uh, do, do, are you a mentor for someone? Right yeah, now? I am and I've been. Um, I've been into programs like Invest uh, Nevada, it's an investor company. Uh, I've been a mentor of uh, Mitt Liv for foreign-born women coming to Sweden. And I've been for Styrs uh, Academy a few others. I've learned that I only take one mentorship at a time. <laughs> Once I had two, it was not good. Mm. But I think it's a, it's a sort of a payback. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so now we're gonna jump up to the one from Anonymous. Anonymous, okay, so I'm Anonymous. Yeah. Is it morally right? that banks create money out of thin air, which they in turn then charge interest on? Well, I'm not sure that I understand the question fully, but the simple basic thing of running a bank is that you get deposits from people having excess cash flow uh, on savings account, deposit accounts, and you pay them interest, at least we pay interest. And then you lend the money to people having uh, less cash but wanting to invest money. That is the basic scheme of <laughs> running a bank, uh, being the uh, intermediary between um, cash flow rich people and investment rich people or investment needing people. Mm. Uh, the thin air, I don't know where the thin air comes from. Uh, it's maybe referring to some. Uh, <sighs> there are strange products creating uh, maybe something similar to thin air, but w for example, um, what I don't like myself is um, the fund structure whereby we are all a uh, little bit um, misled mm -hmm. in saving money in funds for our future pension. And the ban banks create funds and uh, charge tremendous amounts of money for based on the capital you have saved yourself. 
without doing much about it. That is maybe a little bit of thin air. Mm. And I don't like that. So I like, for example, business models as uh, Nana and Mai. Mm -hmm. There yeah. you go. <laughs> whoop whoop. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like uh, Collectiva, which uh, was a sort of sharing program whereby you could use, um, look at everybody's um, pension funds and, and uh, shadow the best ones, if you like. Mm. I mean, by sharing knowledge, sharing experience, we get so much wiser and don't have to spend money on useless bank funds. Very nice. Okay. Well, there you go. Awesome. Thin air. Have you got your answer? <laughs> 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 Wherever you are. All right. So this is going to be the, the last question from the board. The top one right there. And Peter, are you here? Right there. Well, since we're a startup community, um, do you have any regrets from the early days from Collector? Or maybe later? I don't know. Well, of course, I mean, I've made lots of mistakes, but actually no regrets. Because you learn from your mistakes. It, yeah, I think I learned, I've learned more from mistakes than from successes. So no really regrets. Uh, then, of course, the first two years were more hardship than I thought. Mm. But that is not a regret. That's a statement. That's how it is. Oh, thank you. Very nice. Is there a special um, moment that you can remember f that was you know, your biggest mistake, your, like, your blunder? Actually, no, no big mistakes. I'm, I'm sorry to mm. disappoint you, but I mean, to start with, Sounds maybe I, we <laughs> went for <Hopeful>. some <laughs> some really big deals mm -hmm. where we put lots of efforts and and work, and the deals were too big for us, so right. we were declined. But that was a that was a, an experience we learned from, mm. and then I realized I'm going to grow. This company is grow. I'll show them. <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit of revenge, <laughs> and the revenge is very Re useful. Revenge is, is useful. Mm -hmm. And you find, you find creativity in silence. Yeah. Isn't that an interesting quote from Lena? Did I, I say that? that? You said that. Okay. Yeah. I say so many awkward things. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have still the picture with the... the you know, the candy picture? Yeah. <laughs> Just so we end on a great note. Uh, in the meantime, as filling, uh, uh, Philip is figuring out where that photo is, um, Lena, last question. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that the community, the Gothenburg startup community can do for you? Well, I'm not sure that they should do something particularly for me. But overall, I think that the uh, startup community in Gothenburg should try every effort to get together and be a much bigger stage and arena, not hide in different areas of the uh, in different corners. Yep. Stand up, shout, be proud of yourself, and go for it. Uh, I think uh, Stockholm has a much bigger arena. And there are more companies there, but there are quite a few in Gothenburg. But we don't see them act together. There are um, too many corners around. Perfect. And will you help us fix that problem? <laughs> well, if I can do any service. Well, you are right now. Yeah. yeah and by, by being here and investing your time, mm -hmm. uh, and more, by the way, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Some cash as whoa, well? Whoa. <laughs> no. <laughs> really? <laughs> Not that I know. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you get to that part. That's a definition question. Uh, well, we, are, we very much appreciate it, uh, all this that you're doing. And I know you're active in like more things during the tech week. The uh, Dragoness tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be uh, exciting. You're going you're gonna to burn and toast. If you camp, w we don't know. We are four dragons and we have not, not get any information uh, what companies we're going to meet. Any of you can going to be there? But you're not one of the companies, no? no? no, no. Okay. <laughs> I think they're preparing for their pitch. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're that probably right be. now going, holy shit, I should be there. She's <laughs> one of the dragons, but <laughs> I have to do these slides. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they probably give me like three and a half minutes or something. So again, uh, thank you so much for spending your time, investing your time and money in the community. Mm -hmm. um, that is awesome. Uh, not only Sigma stocks are to be the, the happy ones, right? Uh, I know they're happy. Uh, <laughs> they look very happy. They look damn happy <laughs> to me. Yeah. And, and so uh, with that, uh, would love to have a massive round of applause and thank you for Lena for being thank so you for awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. You know, I love flowers and champagne. All right. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. Thank you. And the cash I was referring to is that Lena and Collective sponsored the food and the beer tonight. Hey. You're welcome. Hey. <laughs> That is literally better than cash. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. And a quick announcement from uh, Collector Bank. Uh, they an app have an app in the App Store called Collector Betal Call. It's a great app to pay your invoices and bills in an easy way. So be sure to try that out. Betal Call is good. Betal Call is good. <laughs> Um, thank you, Chalmers Ventures, for doing this with us. They are one of our first partners. Carl is over there. Way! Hey! hey. <laughs> KPMG, Sven. Way! Thank you so much, hey. man. Stena Center. Susan is not here right now, but they are hosting us. So this is Stena Center. It's integrated with Chalmers Ventures as well. Um, but thank you so much. Uh, Robin, where are you? Robin Kautu, Phil, thank you so much, man. <laughs> Photo, Gustav Ekström, Palmiren, where are you? Thank you, man. There you are. Looking forward to those photos. Uh, and last but not least, our ambassadors and helpers for the evening, Filippa, Fredrik, Malin and Vanya. Thank you so much for helping us out. <laughs> our next event will be the 21st or 22nd of June. Maybe together with GLA, we'll see about that, but we will send more info later. Thank you so much, guys. Beer is soon served. I'm Philip Askeviken, and this is our star of Brian Gothenburg. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. All right.